Oh, they're so cute. As you can tell, my feathered friends behind me are standing on a sheet of ice, which means it is still cold outside here in Chicagoland. So what does that mean for us? To get back cracking on the fish retailing area. start the day I am going to prime the liner here put a piece of cover tape down and then I am going to make my penetrations in the liner so this is where those four three inch bulkhead fittings are going to go and this is gonna be our intake area I will do the same thing on the other side inside our pump vault which is just back behind that liner that's draped up behind remember we want to take our time with this make sure the surface is prepped nicely so it's clean it's dry primed really really well I'm gonna use 12 inch cover tape today I will uh, trace out where my bulkhead fittings are gonna go you can kind of see the little circles right down in there of the four holes that we have drilled in there currently. Here's our Firestone primer. We'll go ahead and get some fabric in there. And then we'll just start to apply and so forth. Okay, so now we have the bulkhead fittings attached. All we simply have left to do is just to tighten them on the backside with a pair of channel locks, get them about a quarter turn past hand tight, and then we're good to go. Watertight seal, perfect. Before we wrap everything up in here and button up all the plumbing in between, I actually wanna fill this thing with water. So I've got these plugged so that no water gets back so that I can get back here in this channel and make sure that I don't have any water dripping back down where these bulkheads come through the plywood back here. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. This is our pump vault area, but I'm gonna fill this with water as well. And these are also plugged. So before we do any of the plumbing, linking the bulkheads from here, over to there using three inch pipe. I wanna make sure that everything's watertight. I did the same thing down there on the three bulkhead fittings that are coming out of the bog filter as well. So we're gonna fill this and fill the bog filter at the same time so that I don't have a ton of weight pushing against this two by four wall that's in here. We do have some tie backs tying it back into that wall. I wanna equalize the pressure, the weight. So I'm gonna fill this up and fill the bog at the same time so that this wall doesn't wanna bow out in either direction. You can see I already have some of the lumber laid out. We're trying to figure out how far of an overhang we need to give. I've got one by sixes that are gonna run across the top of the bog filter, trim out the tie backs. This will be a one by 10 going all the way around that way and then cutting back that way as well as going back here and then we will have a piece of 1 by 12 trimming out underneath this trim piece to help hide some of the tape marks some of the folds but it'll give it a nice clean effect that 1 by 12 will also give the appearance that it goes all the way down through water the bottom of it will be about two inches or so below water level so it should be a really neat effect let's get started on trimming this thing out eh Things have not been progressing the way Chris and I really wanted to back in our fish retailing area. Our whole crew is down in Florida, down at Iguana Land. So we lost a lot of our help. And at this point, both Chris and I are slightly stressed about where we need to be at before spring comes. And it's really right around the corner. In fact, in a couple days, our spring newsletter goes out. I mean, that how close spring, spring is around the corner. Hi, Mr. Hansen, how are you? I'm feeling stressed. Mm. As you are, yes. <laughs> we have an, an enormous amount of work to get done. We're gonna get our pipes that are gonna bring the water into the pond, get the liner attached so that we can get the trim pieces up, and then we're gonna fill everything, and just make sure everything's watertight, right? So I've cleared my schedule for the entire day. No consultations, oh. no more bids, no more meetings. Bring in your extra large coffee today. <laughs> so. He's not lying, I did. I had the extra large coffee, was which was about the size of all those MPTs right there. <laughs> All 
All right, guys, quick little update. But you can see Chris is actually trimming the liner away. We've got our top board on right here. Looks pretty straight, huh? We had some, found some lumber actually. So the fact that we found this lumber, we're able to reuse it and got it as straight as we did is a big pat on the back to that guy. Next, we've got to come in over here. We've got to get a two by 10 from there down to here to get a little tricky notching it around those bulkhead fittings. But we got to run that thing down the entire length of this. Uh, what I would be super interested to hear from you guys on, everybody has a very different opinion on what should happen with the timber wall down here. Some of the ideas were corrugated steel to hide it. Some ideas were to do more of like a stucco finish. Some were just to leave it. Uh, what do you guys see us doing with it? Do you care, Chris? <laughs> what I think I'm most impressed with, Chris, with the wall, doesn't matter how we face it, it's holding water. And we haven't seen it blow out yet over here and go out into the office. I think we'll still be able to get a little bit of this stuff going today. Chris, anything to add? You're doing great. <laughs> kind of buttoning up things with the bigger of the koi tanks. I'm gonna come over here and start working on this other one. Here, to here, to here. This is gonna be more of a pond for really high end fish. Give them the space to kind of move around. To look at this, we can either stand here and look over a three foot high wall all the way around it, or we have the option of walking up some stairs right here to a deck that hangs out cantilevers over this pond. The bog filter is gonna sit right underneath this deck. So we need, if we've got a three foot high deck, we obviously have to build a wall here along this and then along this to separate the pond from the bog filter and then this to hold the bog filter in. Best of luck. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hansen, we're at our plumbing over here. Things are looking pretty good, so we had to do it this way. We have a bulkhead fitting here and a bulkhead fitting there, and then we chose to do rubber clamps here. It'd be almost impossible to get the PVC here and here. We could have used unions, but the rubber clamps work just as well. And because they're unpressurized, it should be fine. So the main reason, you guys, we did this rather than a skimmer box, the liner was gonna get really weird down here, and I didn't want like all the fish in the skimmer box. This will just look cleaner and better. Because I don't know if you can see, but the water level is like right about two thirds of the way up on those bulkhead fittings. So those will actually act as a skimmer. So water gets pushed from way down there, just like any other pond. Which one do you want to do first? You, it's your, I mean, they're your bulkheads. <laughs> it's kind of exciting. It's like uh, Christmas for ponds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, twisting it by hand. We'll come over this side. And it should just equalize. first of three fish retailing systems is done. The biggest one. So we've got it up and running. I wanted to show you guys a bunch of different little bells and whistles that we have on this thing, but rather than me explain it, let's have Chris do it because he's in an awesome position to do that right now. Mr. Hansen, yeah. it's up and running. Like we promised. <laughs> Why don't we take him just kind of through the journey of the water? As we talked about in the last video, this is our enormous wetland filter for the entire fish re retailing system. So to get the water from the bog filter into the pond itself, so we put these three three inch bulkhead fittings in here, but we ended up putting elbows on the inside of the bog filter. And the reason we did that, we didn't glue them so that we can manipulate these and rotate them back and forth to help us really fine tune the water level up here and the amount of water coming through all these pipes. You can see I monkeyed with it just a little bit and a lot of the water was going into here. Originally, we had talked about just bringing the pipes straight out, which is what we did, but what we found was... Yeah, show them that. As you can see, when they dump straight out, we made a great observation yesterday, it really agitates this top water, making it really, really hard for people to see the fish that are gonna be in the last, what, three tanks that are in here. Yep. Also, we were struggling with circulation going straight down. So you had the genius <laughs> idea to throw an elbow and a little standpipe on the end of it so that we can go ahead and just stick this thing on there. And now 
you still have that push of water pushing everything back down towards the intake. But notice that you can see straight down to the bottom. You can even see some of the little gravel that's down there, but it really improves. This is really awkward. <laughs> I like how you twisted it back this way and threw another elbow on, because what was happening is we, we had this dead zone within the last, what, three feet or so. Mm -hmm. So you just twisted it back this way, kicks over to this corner, and then help in back down that front side. And then this area, we're still playing around with different ideas on how to hide that. The one thing 100% we knew we were gonna do is the entire constructed wetland was gonna get grow lights on it so we could load this up with aquatic plants. Behind that, we were still kind of puzzled on what we would do to hide the wall. People had tons of great suggestions. I love the idea of doing a live wall. We just gotta see um, what the grow lights will produce and uh, what will grow in low light conditions back in here. Cause again, we are in a warehouse without any natural light. We might paint it, we might do some murals, we might do some lifestyle pictures. We also talked about putting a fascia board along this whole side, but what did we discover here? Our old fish retailing signage worked out really, really stinking well. It hangs over the back of this one by six, and obviously we can print out new pictures, yep. but each tank now can have their own individual sign with the type of fish that are in there. It'll make it really, really easy for us to have great signage, but also update the signage very easily for our customers to be very well informed. Which more importantly, Chris, saved us a whole lot of work. We weren't exactly sure how, how big of an opening we were gonna be able to get away, or how many openings we needed to have to be able to compensate for the draw of the pump or maybe a supplemental pump in the future as mm -hmm. well. So we ended up with four three inch bulkhead fittings. So all the water is traveling through these four bulkhead fittings, which you saw installed earlier in the video. It travels through these four pipes into our pump vault area, which you can see we already have one of our pumps in there and that's feeding the wetland filter. So the water goes up through this pipe, through the check valve, through this piece of two inch back there and then back down into the bog filter. Like one big circle. <laughs> and so in this area to finish it off, again, we've got another big terrestrial plant pocket over in here, which will blend in really nice with all of our aquatic plants sitting in that uh, constructed wetland. The only thing we have to hide is this area here. We're still kind of playing around with different ideas. Maybe a big fake stone over the top, maybe a raised planter, but we need to get something that's easily removable. So if we ever need to get into the pumps, we can do that. What was really interesting is like Chris said, those four bulkhead fittings, it was really just an educated guess on not just the size, but how many needed to go through there. What we found is if the water drops down, what? like maybe an inch mm -hmm. the water coming through that by gravity doesn't keep up with the amount of water pumping out to that area Being there by the pump, exactly. mm -hmm. so one thing we might have to do is put an automatic fill valve in a warehouse setting like this we get a, a enormous amount of water lost due to evaporation hope you guys enjoyed our project over here we're about to start on the rest of it can't wait to show you this thing finished finished with the plants and the aquatics and the grow lights next project this space like comment subscribe you know the routine we'll see you next time bye